Oh, Just man. getting into it. All right. We're back again. Technical difficulties. We're as always. looking like professionals. As always. You know. We are professionals. Hey, we're average guys. You know, I'm not some pro podcaster. No, nah, man. Is there such thing? Yes. Yes, there is. Yes, there definitely is. <laughs> um, anyway, so in case you didn't hear in the last episode... Uh, this episode we're going to be doing a gear check. Rodman and I both brought our dive bags in here today to open them up and see what's inside. We both were diving recently. I went up to the springs. Rodman is teaching courses and whatnot. We've both gotten some salt water recently. Yeah, Chase and Wahoo. I, I did not check my bag, so it will be interesting to see exactly lies. what is in there lies you pulled one thing out of your bag i opened one pocket to see and there's a pair of dirty underwear i'm like i'm glad i opened that one pocket there's only two pockets in the thing <laughs> <laughs> so we intentionally i haven't opened my bag since i went to the springs which is a little scary because i know there's wet wetsuits in there so we'll see what happens uh, That's but as so always bad, man. we would like to start this podcast off by thanking our sponsors Ballast Freediving, check them out on Instagram at Ballast Freediving. You can find all the awesome gear that they make at Florida Freedivers. Also, FL Freedivers on Instagram. Or you can go to their sweet store location in North Lake, um, in North Palm Beach, on North Lake, and uh, get them check, go through some renovations, getting that all wrapped up. Nice. Can't wait for that to be done, man. And what's the other one? Teach me free dive. That's the one. Learn how to uh, not only get awesome gear, but learn how to use it correctly, man. Spear fishing classes. If you're new to spear fishing, they offer spear fishing classes. A level one course. If you follow uh, me on Instagram, Robin underscore fi, you see all those amazing photos that uh, that the students post coming through. So, I uh, awesome awesome course, beginner to uh, to expert level. Go through that level one course, and they started teaching at PBA. There so, you if you're a PBA student, you're in luck. You can get credit, college credit courses. For taking a free dive course. For becoming a better free diver. Come on. Awesome that? That's awesome. Um, so, you can see in the back over here, I've got my bag somewhere. Right there. Right there. Mailed it. Um, I've got the Florida Free Divers Remora backpack, which is a pretty sweet little setup. I've had this one for quite a long time. It's like one of the first, when they first got them in the store, I got one. Um, it's got the rubber stamp on it. That's how you know. Gen 1, the first first edition. I'll show you some details on it. You can definitely tell this thing has been around. Um, and then Rodman's got... What do you got, Rodman? The Rob Allen Finn backpack. I, yeah, I absolutely love it. It's a vault. It holds a ton of freaking gear, which is nice because I usually bring extra sets of gear for students or even for me, me. There's nothing worse than going out on a trip and having a fin blow out of the back of a boat. Uh, or someone steps on your mask, something like that, or I just forget it. I take something out to to dry it or check it, and it's five in the morning, and I'm not brain's not fully functioning yet, and I forget to put it back in the bag. Well, at least I have my backup mask, backup weight belt, stuff like that. Yep. You know. Um, and we'll so we're gonna go through our bags. Like I said, we'll probably mention some of the gear that's in there. Maybe drop a couple of links where you can pick those up on Florida Free Divers website. You can check both of these bags out. You can get there. Um, so we're sure. gonna leave some links down in the description. Um, not live. I don't, I don't know. I'm not good enough to figure that out yet. But definitely after the fact, we'll add them in there. Nice. And uh, yeah, I think we'll talk not only the gear, but we'll talk about the bags, and eventually we'll review all the gear that uh, that, that we dive that with. That we dive with. Yeah. Um. So, should we get right into it, or do you want to start with a story? I'm no. Let's just get into it, man. Let's get into it. Let's we get into it. Stories in the other time. Yeah. So I'm going to switch our camera view over here to the combined view. Ooh. Ooh. Um, swing on in there. I'm gonna drag. Both, both swing on in. Huh? Drag my mic over, and I guess you want to start with you, or, you, or should we go? Sure. Both my my bag. Back, no, let's do it one at a time. One bag at a time. Sure. Okay. I am. You want to man the action cam? That I can do. All right. Um. Go ahead and get started. All I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to set something else up over here. Well, let's... Oh, all right. Let's just start by talking about the bag. So, this is the Rob Allen Finn backpack. I At least that's what we call it, Florida Free Divers. I absolutely love this bag. It's a beast. I've had it maybe three years, and I beat the crap out of it. There is a, a, a couple features that I look for in any bag. The first one 
No, keep going, sorry. The first one is um, backpack straps. So you can get ones that are just drawstring on the top or messenger bag style. But if even if you're just walking down the dock and back, having being able to uh, put the load on both shoulders and just having to be more stable, it's not falling off your shoulder or anything like that, back strap, backpack straps are key. This one has super wide back strap, uh, backpack straps, shoulder straps, and the buckles down here are, uh, everything's like overbuilt and awesome. I love this thing. It also holds a ton of gear, like I mentioned. It does have um, cinch down straps if you wanted to. Oh, there we go. It does have cinch down straps if you wanted to tighten it up for any reason. I pretty much just let those things, uh, let those things ride. All right, there was a little bit of a learning curve to this bag. The uh, bottom of the bag, I'm gonna try to talk into the microphone here, but I cannot guarantee <laughs> anything. The bottom of the bag, see that hole in there? Bang. So that hole started because I was putting my fins, my kick carbons, which you'll see in a second, uh, towards the bottom. And they would just kind of saw sideways uh, through the bottom. And because I'm in the pool all the time teaching, it's basically like sharpening those things on the bottom of the pool. Mm. Those carbons are, I've actually cut myself on them, I are super sharp. My old pair of carbons were like legit razors. Other people, I, if you kick them on the boat or anything like that, you get cut. So the newer pair isn't so bad because we're teaching different pools now. Uh, it's a, a lot deeper, so I'm not kicking the bottom quite as much. But uh, but now I just put the fins towards the top and, and problem solved. Uh, Chad Bagwell. He's got the same back. He, he was like, well, why don't you just switch it around? And uh, I was like, yeah, that's smart. Made me feel real dumb. But uh, <laughs> so that's real good. It also has this little pocket on the side. This pocket, I wouldn't call it a dry pocket, but because it's that like DWR vinyl on, on the outside, it does stay pretty freaking dry if you have it zip closed. I usually have my uh, PLB in there, my personal locator beacon. I have like one of those ARC ones, the ACR ones. I left it on Dante's boat though. Dante, what camera am I? I think it's on your boat, man. I <laughs> so I really like it. The zippers are all YKK zippers, so they hold up really well. It's a plastic zipper. This part is metal, so it doesn't break. Obviously, it's a little bit corroded, but uh, it still zips just fine. All right. Those zippers, I will say, are really money on these things. Having a big fat plastic zipper. Yeah. is nice is what you want a I lot of cheap bags even though it sounds weird um a lot of cheap bags use like a metal zipper like the real cheap thin metal zippers and they corrode and rust out like instantly seize yeah, yeah within a month yeah i and that's the failure point that's where you see the bags fail isn't that the, like the seams are really coming out of that it's the the zipper breaks all right shall we crack into it yeah break her open Bang! All right, so wetsuits. I'm inside out. 1.5 Florida Freedivers top. Why are my wetsuits? I am. Why are they inside out? Because when I take it off, they're inside out, and then I dry it inside out. I heard Eric say he put his wetsuit away wet. He is going to get MRSA. Do <laughs> not, do not uh, put your wetsuits away wet. Dry them out. Dry them out inside out in the shade. Otherwise mushrooms will start growing out of the stupid things and uh and you'll get all sorts of funky um they get skin on the you did, you said you're diving with freddie this weekend possibly uh possibly nice ask him about that gnarly i am all right 1.5 top three mil bottoms good call why why do i do that the 1.5 top especially in open cell is super flexible. It is so comfortable once it's lubed up. The three mil pants, I am also super comfortable. The Florida Freediver suit is money. It's not the fact that they sponsor the podcast that definitely doesn't hurt or that I work for them. It is the best suit for the money that I've ever seen. Bar none, period. I. It is the most comfortable, durable, stretchiest suit. That combination of those three things it is, it is the best one. Some suits are a little bit more durable, but they're not stretchy at all. This so, suit, let's see how stretchy that thing is. So, I mean, what's that, a foot? You know, double, doubles and stretch. Nice. I am, I freaking. You can use that to power up a roller gun. There you go. I love this thing. The three mil bottoms, why do I use those? It helps me get 
Uh, it helps float my legs. If you're not perfectly flat in the water during your... Oh, my Calvins. Uh, <laughs> if uh, you're not perfectly flat in the water and you do your water entry, it's not going to come out right. You're, you're not going to be diving vertically straight up and down. Those three mils helps float my legs a little bit, and uh, and it's money. I definitely suggest that. Cool. All right, what else do we have in here? I next are my fins on the towards the top of the backpack straps. I kick the C4 Falcons. These things are awesome. They're a great uh, budget pair of of blades. They're not the most expensive blades on in the world, but they're that T700 carbon, 100% carbon and they work really good. A couple years ago, two years ago, maybe that T700 was maybe the best carbon you could get, and now it's... Uh, it's uh, still pretty good. It's still awesome. It's not. It's obviously not worse. Has there, um, has better carbon technology come out? Yeah, maybe, but because of that, they've dropped the price on these things, and they're the right size, they're the right width and length for me. I, re I really like them. I am, and I kick the Bouchot foot pockets. Chances are you're going to have to glue your Bushu, uh, Bushu, <laughs> Bushu, Bushat foot pockets on, but these things fit my feet amazing. If you're coming from Cressy Garas, if you kick the, the Garas, try the, and you're looking for carbon blades, try these. They are awesome, and they have a nice stiff heel on them. If you guys can see that, look, there's like no droop at all when I do that. I love these things. All right. What's next? What's next? Crispy old ballast gloves, but you can see the the palms in them are still money. All right, that where do they usually break? Like right in there. Look at that. Have these things forever. I right. those things are awesome. All right. Two two masks and an extra snorkel. This is my go-to mask, the Omer Apnea. I'm one lens, but it's pretty small uh, volume. I really, really like this mask a lot. It fits me very well. I have a big crow magnon brow, and my brow usually gets hammered. Wait, you mean to tell me that this is not an ultra low volume mask, but it's the one that fits you, so you wear it anyway? What? What? <laughs> what? Yes, fit is more important than function. I am, yeah, I love this mask. I am, this is my go-to snorkel. I really like, not having a black snorkel because everyone's black mask goes on the back of the boat. I can easily tell mine because it's got this like I blue, we'll call it camouflage pattern and a bright orange fluorescent orange sticker. If you don't have a yeah, the camera, can't even look at it. camera can't even look at it. It's, it's just bright. day glow. If you don't have high vis on that end of your snorkel, I um, change that immediately. All right. What else do I got? Conditioner anti-frizz conditioner that's key that i don't mean keep I'll, that. I'll let your imagination run wild with that bad boy <laughs> keep that back hair looking <laughs> Com compass all right my garment watch tells me where i need to go uh-oh uh, we had an escapee uh, oh man extra there it is <laughs> what's coming up God, next dude. This is <laughs> extra extra snorkel keeper. Always good. So this is what I was using to chase Wahoo. My <laughs> sling. No reel, because I was hooked a, hooked a float line up to the the muzzle eye, and then a bunch of line that went to the shaft. So you shoot it, whoosh, this line goes out, takes everything, so in line with the with the float. In line, float line, sling. Sling for Wahoo. Yeah. Yeah, I never look at it right here. Sorry. I'm extra load assist because I shoot when I'm using my gun. It's you can never have too many. It's always load a assist. roller, and there ain't no chance in the heck I'm loading this thing without a load assist. No, extra. But I mean, most roller guns, if you don't have a load assist, you're not you're not shooting the gun. You're not shooting it. Yeah. I'm. To switch my reel from my spear gun to my belt, if I want to run a belt reel, these headhunter belt adapters are freaking money, so you don't have to buy a whole nother uh, belt reel. What else do I got? An extra I am injector rod for my rifle spear. That's been in there a 
since summer. <laughs> uh, uh, what else? My blue and black belt with neon weights. That is. Dang, there's some fire weights, dude. Oh, I wonder where you can get those. Only one place in the world. USA. Florida Free Divers. <laughs> I am, and then another belt. Just in case. Just in case. A little extra ugly, just to. And then a bunch of uh, extra bright color weights. This one's still got string on it from weighing down, both of these do, from weighing down uh, targets for practice. Mm, there you for go. practice shooting. Uh, anything else in here? A bunch of dirt. A whole, whole bunch of dirt. But, uh, all right. That's a pretty good haul, man. That's a serious pile of stuff. Bam. Bam. Sweet. What's Here your favorite piece of gear in that pile? Uh, ooh, that mask, man. I am, I really like, I really like this mask. I am, the mask is the most important piece of kit for me. I am very, very particular about what mask I use. And because we work at the shop, I get to try out a bunch of them. So I just have this Cressy, this Cressy mask, which I was trying out, which is new. Can you see that nose pocket in there? They say this sits against your face and creates, I am, where am I? So it's, you can see that ridge there, that it prevents fogging and they call it the fog stop technology. I had mixed results. I am, I normal, if you treat your mask right, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be fogging anyway. The mask fit me okay. Uh, this fogging stuff, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, jury's still out on that. But sure. I like, I like this mask. And the snorkel, I cut the bite out of my snorkel. I don't know if you can. I don't understand why he does that, but he does. See that? Cut the bite out of it. Cool. All right. I'm going to put you guys back up here for a second. Maybe. And grab my bag. Alright. Here we go. Focus, Damien. Alright, sweet. So, here we have my... <laughs> Got some stuff flying out the side already. Um, Florida Freedivers Remora Backpack. Pretty similar in concept to Rodman's bag as well. Backpack style dive bag. Now this one has been around for a while, so it does have some busted straps, but I've had this bag for, well, that was weird, for years. Um, how long ago would you say these bags came into the shop? That bag is at least two years old minimum. It's cool. way older than two years. Yeah, so it's probably... I've been working at Florida Free Divers for two years. Yeah. The shop's been at the new store for don't, three years. Don't say that to and me. And I bought this at the don't, old store. Don't, don't say that to me. <laughs> so, this bag is probably five years old. Four years old or five years old. It's probably four years old. Probably four years old. So, anything that's in the salt water that amount of time is bound to uh, start breaking down at some point. But that being said... All the zippers still fire, no problem. You can even see, get a close up on that right there. You see what that is? That is a lot of salt. That is nothing but straight up salt right there. You could bottle this up and sell it to hipsters. That's some good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> um, so everything on here is still fully functional. A couple buses, straps, even the bungee doesn't bungee anymore. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, get, we'll just get right into it. I'm going to start with the front pocket. Well, one cool thing on these front pockets, got to get past some of the salt there. This front pocket's actually insulated, which is a little bit different. You don't really see many bags offering that option. Um, so this is actually kind of like a thick, it's that vinyl plastic. Um, this stuff is uh, soft cooler, never, just like a soft, like yeah, a like a soft, soft cooler. cooler. I've never used it for a cooler or as a cooler, but it's kind of cool that you have the option, you especially the option. for beach diving, that kind of thing. Um, so a couple things fell out of here, but the first thing is mask. And this is my go-to. It's the Marius Viper. I run the green because I like it a little extra ugly. 
Um, right now I've been running the Rife Stable Snorkel. Living dangerous with the purge. purge. So we'll see how long this guy lasts. So far, I really like that snorkel. What? I don't and know if key, you're going to say it. Like, the key cool. for me, the hot pink mass strap. So again, camera doesn't really like looking at it. Super hot pink on one side, um, lime green on the other side. Really, really good visibility. This is like a really nice thing for boats to see. They can see this stuff really easily. Your head, the back of your head is usually one of the only things out of the water when you're just swimming around. Um, so it lets the boat keep track of you really well. Yeah. To, to that point, that I'm, and it, the video is not doing it justice of how like day glow pink that thing is. From driving the boat and looking for dive groups, that neon pink mass, mass strap, and they really the day glow green too, but that neon pink especially is money, man. I, as crazy, soon right? as we went to the Bahamas one, when you first got it, I came back to the store and bought, and bought one the first chance I got. I really, really um, like the, liked the idea of it. We, it didn't work for me, the neoprene mash strap, but we came up with a solution. We just got them in the shop and it is a day glow snorkel that is day glow. That thing is sweet. I'm yeah. probably gonna get one, I'm, actually. I'm definitely getting one. Um, all right, so next up, like I said, I, I just got back from diving the springs. So the wetsuit, the pants already fell out. I was actually running the hex top. This is a three millimeter top and boy, that has got a <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so this is actually still very wet. Um, I'm going to take this to the shop with me and <laughs> throw this in a, a wetsuit dip. <laughs> um, oh also, <laughs> that is so bad. Also, thank, thank god YouTube doesn't have smell of vision <laughs> Also have a set of ballast gloves here. Um, seal ballast gloves. Yeah. Also wet. Also. What's cool about it? So, oh, all right. Never mind. They mold to your like uh, not fingerprints, but like if you look at like the fingers on there. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of weird, but like you can this see is, like the folds of your fingers. This is the shape of my middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I think that's cool, but I just think that's cool. Um. All right. <laughs> um, some rock and some mildew. So, continuing on, um, also left in here from when we were chasing Wahoo the other day, I have a 50-foot polypropylene float line foam core with probably 20 to 30 feet of 3.8 spongy on the front of it. Um, so, that's an extra little thing. that We definitely need to go over that float line setup at some point. That is the ideal float line set up. I, you don't, you can't you don't need to spend $300 on a float line. No. You just don't need to. Um, oh, so continuing with the wetsuit, I have a pair of 5 mil Omer Blackstone pants in here. Ooh, the Kevin Mahaffey uh, black camo specials. Yeah. The black and white camo. So shout out Tommy looking for that black and gray camo. Uh, Kevin looking for that color. Yep. It's been made. It's been done. Kevin's wearing this top right now, also at the spring, so whatever. There you go. Um, five mil because I get super cold in the springs and I need it. I'm a baby when it comes to cold water. And man, that five mil makes the difference. You were diving a five mil, I was diving a 1.5 top. Yeah, no, not for me. <laughs> I'll stick with five. No, it was chilly water. I was cold. It was 72 degrees. Um, so digging a little bit further, I do have a pair of Florida Freediver socks. In here, they're the 1.5 or are these 2 mil? Uh, and they are 2 mil. 2 mil neoprene socks. I don't generally wear these all that often, but I bring them with me just in case. You never know. I might only have one actually. <laughs> Next up, I also generally have a bunch of extra weights in here, but all my extra weights are on my weight belt um, from diving that 5 mil. So those five mils are really freaking floaty, as you can see I was wearing. And your diving's pretty shallow as well. Seven, seven pounds. Um, this is a kind of an old school Omer rubber belt with the metal buckle. I like you got your, the D-ring on there. The D-ring, yep. The D-ring's key. So man. this thing is awesome. I actually, I find I use it the most when I'm running a float line. When I'm first getting in the water, instead of clipping the float line to my gun, I clip it to this. And it like keeps it out of the way. It's not attached to the gun. I can load the gun without getting float line in the way. It just seems to work for me. That's smart. That's a 
That's smart. So that's, that's that. I'm gonna feel that. We've got an old rifle knife, another balance glove. I wonder how long that's been. I wonder what, I just realized I didn't have my knife in my bag. I wonder what happened to my knife. Mm. This is why you gotta check your check the bags before you get out of them. So I have a a rife knife, a little crusty, not too bad. I've seen way worse. I've seen. Still got the tip on there, man. Yeah, this thing's hit the grindstone a few times. In an Omer knife sheath. There you go. Go figure. I mean, they make the same knives. What? Interesting. Um, however, this is quickly going to be replaced by another knife that I just got, which is my new favorite knife in the world. The Rife Hunter? Wrangler. The Wrangler, the Hunter's the other one. Yeah. The single edge version. We'll show you that knife. We'll probably do a highlight on that knife in the future because it's amazing. Alright, so that is it for the very front pocket here. Um, Anything in the little dry pocket? There's some stuff in there. I'll do that last stuff. That's the money pocket? I guess. So in the main pocket here, I actually, those wetsuit pants were in here, but uh, the only thing in here I think. Ooh. There might be some. Oh, there is some extra stuff on it. We got a wombo combo. Also got some shorts. Uh huh. You know, when you need to dress to impress. Okay. Oh, dude, there's all kinds of stuff in here. Holy cow. Uh, shirt. Nice. Probably from when I was changing to go diving. I've got. I don't even know why this is in there. That's bowstring wax. <laughs> I have no idea how that. I cannot think of a single use for that diamond. No, that's just probably fell in there from my car. Um, I've got a bunch of random carabiners just in case I ever need a carabiner. I always have a bunch of these around. Um, these are old ones from back in my Boy Scout days. Camp Daniel Boone. Conditioner, Ooh, and running the Tresemme, the high high class stuff. I've also got long hair, so I'm gonna throw some of that in there as well. Um, I've got a little, what I like to call a dry bag full of extra stuff. Uh, I've got extra hollow core Dyneema. I've got some Rafe Spectra, extra mass strap, mm, tie line. I really like that that Rife Thin Dyneema. Is oh, dude, I've been using that for so much stuff lately. It's freaking slick. Extra tuna clips. This is the kind of stuff I bring if I'm doing, you know, any extended trip. Generally to the Bahamas. I don't know why this is in there. A little GoPro now. Um, that's cool. I'm glad that was in there. I forgot that was in there. <laughs> and then my fins. So I'm currently running the... Headhunter slash Moana Waterman. These are the Euro blades. They're a little bit wider, shorter blade than you generally find. These are carbon. Pretty sweet fins. Um, I have been using them with the Pathos Pockets. It's the first time I've ever owned a pair of Pathos Pockets. I haven't really dove them enough to determine whether they're not my go-to. Can you move the camera up a little bit? Yeah, where do you want it? Up yonder. Alright. Um, so, so far, I like them. I definitely would love to do a full review of foot pockets comparing all the different foot pockets. Um, but just like Rodman with his boot shot, no droop on that heel, which is really, really nice. Um, that's one thing that the Pathos is good at. I do have two different color rails for some reason. I got lazy, started putting blue rails on my fins, and uh, didn't do the other one. You got an L and an R on there. What's up with that? Mm, so that's, yeah, you can see the an L over here, R over here. Um, the Pathos foot pockets are, you can heat them up and kind of mold them a little bit. So once I molded them, they're obviously molded for each foot. So you got to make sure to know which one goes where. And the last pocket, last but not least, I know there's a couple things in here. Okay. Defog. Uh, just checking in there first. A little bit of defog. Sea gold. Don't like the sea gold. I bought this because I wanted to try something different. I'm gonna stick with sea drops. Ooh. See, I'm a sea gold kind of guy. It, I don't like it. It lasts forever. I don't it's like it. Concentrate. There's a buff in here. This is not my buff. I don't know whose this is. <laughs> it's funny how that works, huh? 
Um, if this is yours, hit me up. It's the Hoorag, actually. Shout out Hoorag. It's kind of a cool design. Might keep it for myself. Um, and then what else we got in here? A little bit of Sudafed. I think that's it. Sudafed's money. Boom. Remora bag. Down. Bam. <laughs> All right. So that is our bag collections. I guess you you said your favorite thing in your bag. My favorite mm -hmm. piece of gear in my bag right now is sorry. No worries. Camera adjustment on the fly. Um. Said. I would I would probably in my bag right now is probably my Moana blades. Um, I generally actually have two pairs of blades with me. But Kevin's got my ice blades right now. I'm letting him use those to try those out. As you all know, I love my ice blades. Those ice blades are freaking awesome. They're so good. Um, but I really, this is actually the first pair of carbons I've ever bought for myself. Um, and actually like really used for an extended period of time. So I've really been enjoying trying them out and seeing what they're capable of. It's been fun. There you go. And now we have all kinds of different colors of these rails. So I'm probably going to do a different color on this one, just to keep it consistent. I mean, you're already at the mix, mix match. You got to keep it that way. <laughs> All right. You want to go back to normal cam mode here? For sure. Bam. There we are. <laughs> Our, oh, man, that camera is just... There we go. Now we're looking good. <laughs> All right. I am, All right, so that was our bag, man. I think that... It, uh, I think that kind of covers it. It's not all the gear that I always use. It's just what's yeah. in the bag uh, right now. We'll definitely do extended reviews on each piece of the kit and why why I pick you know why I put it in the bag. For sure. But we were searching for something to do. We figured <laughs> this will be a good one. I so uh, I think it was fun. Yeah. So I think it was fun. I found some stuff that I didn't know I had. There you go. And, and it, you too. And as we yeah. review that gear. Any of you guys want any of the re gear reviewed, or if you're thinking about buying something and you want to see a review of it, we have access to everything. Yeah. And we test our own gear a ton. Um, just like I had that, the string on the weights for target shooting. It's because we yeah. play around with all the different guns. We were shooting, we were switching out Rob Allen mechanisms today in the shop, trying to figure out which one we like to that we're gonna go test. So. If there's anything that you want to see technically reviewed or just for us to put an opinion on it, let us know uh, and we, it's what we we're will here do for. And we won't be digging through our moldy bags, Eric. We'll actually have something fun to, uh, to podcast about. That's pretty bad. What, before we before we head out, real quick, what's your least favorite thing that you brought out of your bag? Ooh, probably the moldy Calvins. I am... <laughs> <laughs> the my least favorite thing I how about this so like a technically least favorite thing was it was my first time bringing out the Hawaiian sling for for mm -hmm. Wahoo and so it was a definitely a learning curve uh, for that and I put a ton uh, and there's no reel on that thing right it's just like a wooden dowel I had our cat 5 sling which I wind up switching to but it's not it doesn't live in my bag I keep it at the shop that has a line release system on it. It's like an, an actual spear gun line release on it. With that, I'm used to use, cause I'll run that same exact setup in the Bahamas with like four to six feet of, of line on it. And yeah. it's super manageable. You don't need the line release on it. It works perfect for that. But I put like 12 feet of line on there. That was a fail. Uh, and you guys can see how much line there was on there. You need you need the Cat Five line management system. I if wish you're gonna I had run a video that much of you line out there in the water. <laughs> Every time I look at you, you're rewrapping that thing. I'm without shooting anything. I'm telling you, I, I took a bunch of I took a bunch of shots that day. That was that was fun. Not all on not any that was on an awesome Wahoo, dive day. But that was yeah. a freaking awesome dive day. Yeah. From now on, I'm always filming, always filming. Learning that one, but. Uh, my but least yeah, favorite yours? thing, um, seagull. Don't like it. Weak, weak. Seagull's money. Too gelatinous. Oh, it is like, that's why it's good. Uh, I like that syrup. Hit me with the seed drops. 
Um, if you don't lose it, that sea, little thing of sea drops will last you the rest of your life. I have two things. The bo- bowstring wax. I don't know why that's in there. I just foresee that melting in there and getting over everything. <laughs> I definitely need to take that out. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning into this episode. As always, thank you to our sponsors, Ballast Freediving, Florida Freedivers, and Teach Me to Freedive. Ron, do you have any exiting words? No. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and see you next week. See you in the next one. Wrong cam. <laughs>